again, how are you all? If you are new around here, um, hello, nice to meet you, welcome. If you are returning, then thank you very much for coming back. This is gonna be a part two of a video that I recently done regarding Glossier. I spoke about Glossier as a brand overall, and I spoke about their skincare in particular in part one. This video is gonna be all about their cosmetics, their makeup, that kind of side of things, and probably gonna be a little bit of a get ready with me. As you can see, I'm bare face just now. I have no makeup on whatsoever. So for anybody who's just joining and thinking, Jesus, this is not what I expected, <laughs> I apologize. Nothing on my skin at the moment. And I thought I would do a little get ready with me to show you the products on my skin as well. I thought that would make much more sense. And then we'll go into detail about the actual products. So if that sounds like the kind of thing you are into, maybe you are following up for part one, then just keep watching. Now the sun has just decided it would disappear there. I mean, it's still bright outside. The weather's been pretty good. I have to say, I can't complain for Scotland. Weather has been nice. Um, but it's just disappeared again. So if the light changes throughout this video, I apologize. I'm not putting the big light on today. I couldn't be arsed. Get yourself a cup of tea. I'm talking with a cup of tea in front of me that whole time there. Get yourself a cup of tea because this is going to be a long video. I like a ramble. Um, if you like shorter videos, go and follow me over on Instagram. I do quick, snappy, 10 to 15 minute things over there. But for things like this, I like to take my time and talk about things thoroughly and honestly. So let's get into it. Throughout this video, I will have up here on this side, the information about prices, sizes, etc. In the last video, I had ingredients as well. I'm not going to go into that. I'll maybe just talk about number of shades and things like that. Now, I did pick up the Comfort Collection, which was the hand cream, the bubble wrap, eye and lip cream, and the moisturizer riche. I spoke all about the moisturizer riche in the last video because I have already tried this. Uh, I have used this the last two days since this order arrived and I still really like it. Please go over and check out part one if you want to see more information on this because I'm not going to blather on about it because as I say, these videos are going to be long enough. You don't need to have everything repeated to you. In regard to the hand cream, I have yet to try it. I have not even opened it as of yet. As you can see here, it comes in this, I, I want to say it's a paper packaging. The need for this, I'm kind of unsure of, but I think by the feel of it, because it's a squeezy tube, maybe they were worried about it exploding in, in transit or something like that. So maybe that's why they put it in a paper bag, I don't know. But this certainly looks like it's a recyclable material, which is always a plus point. Um, I have not yet tried this, as I say, and I don't want to put it on my hands right now because I'm about to apply lots of stuff to my face. The Bubble Wrap Eye Cream, uh, Eye and Lip Plumping Cream, I should say. Now, I have used this the last two days, and not only at night, I've used it in the morning as well. I have used it today alongside my skincare routine. I did put on the moisturizer Riche today before I started, and then I put this on as well. I do like this, but this is very much a first impression type situation because I think two days in would be a little bit shitty of me to like be like, oh, it's crap or it's wonderful, blah, blah, blah. I'd just like to be honest about that. My favorite Kiehl's Avocado Eye Cream is a 28 mil pot that I sometimes get. So they're within similar kind of ranges of size there. I really, really like the packaging. I am a bit of a sucker for glossy packaging, I have to say. It's very, very cute. And look at the little, oh, it's just nice. It's really, really nice. It is also like a sealed airtight pump, which is very, very nice. It means your product's not going off. It means you're not dipping your finger in and kind of cross-contaminating things. Personally, that doesn't really bother me because it is only me that is using this eye cream, but I know that is a main factor for a lot of people who do not like to do that. So that's that. Thought I would just throw them in there. I just didn't want to go into too much about them. Future Dew, I did speak about in my last video as well. So again, not going to go into too much about that. I was really bloody stupid. I ordered this kind of, all this stuff that I ordered. I ordered all this stuff I could order. <sighs> vocabulary, uh, I put an order in and basically, stupidly, didn't put Future Dew in my basket. I am lucky though that there is maybe enough for two or three more uses out of this. And I, I, I'm telling you now, I know I will go back and repurchase this. I actually had a little look online to see what dupes were for Future Dew. And at the moment, I can see no outright dupe of this. As I've said before, I do use the Kiehl Glow Formula quite a lot as well. Tend to use this more in the summer. That one has a bit more of a kind of a golden glow. This one is a bit more kind of a, a, a 
pinky glow, that kind of iridescent radiance to your skin. I do have a pretty pink undertone to my skin anyway. I'm kind of that lovely, ruddy Scottish colour. So <laughs> um, I think that's relatively quite flattering on me. So we're going to start off with applying this to the face. I have put two little pumps there onto my skin. And while I'm applying this to my skin, I thought what I might do is actually talk to you about a couple of other products that I have used but have yet to purchase um, again. Like I've not repurchased them since I purchased them the first time round. Why I haven't repurchased them and why I wasn't going to purchase them solely just to show you in this video. So let's talk about the Skin Perfecting Tint. Again, photos, information on this side. The Skin Perfecting Tint is Glossier's version of, I suppose, I can't say BB cream, I can't say moisturiser, I can't say foundation. What can I say it is? I picked this up kind of maybe my second or third order with Glossy and I thought I really, really want to try something as a base. Could I do a whole face of Glossy and include that as my base? And the honest truth is I just don't see the point in the perfecting skin tint. Um, obviously Glossier are going for that very much like your skin shines through look and I love the future dew because as you can maybe see now my skin's got this radiant glow to it and I like that. I do have kind of this, this is my fault. This wasn't that bad a pimple and then I picked it and it went red. Under here, oh, you get to see the jolly, get to see all sides of the beautifulness um, plus probably chin hairs but... Um, this actually was a scratch from my cat. <laughs> so we've got like a little scratch here. We've got a nice fresh spot here. I have pigmentation here from old blemishes. So I quite like something that will show my skin shine through. I like having a bit of freckles in the summertime if they show up. I like that fresh dewy look. I think it is much more flattering of a woman of my age now. Uh, that is not to say that women in their mid to late 30s or anything like that who are wearing a full face are not flattering. You do what's best for you but personally I like that glowy more fresh look as opposed to the look I liked when I was younger which was a lot more glam I suppose. That's what you probably call it now, glam. My favourite is the number 7 Hydroluminous at the moment and has been for about a year because it is a nice crossover between a BB cream, it is moisturising, it keeps me fresh and, fresh, fresh and dewy looking, but it still gives an element of coverage just to even out these little patches here. The skin tint is very similar to that of Future Dew or the Kiehl's Glow Formula in that there's not really any coverage. This doesn't give me any coverage by putting it on the skin. The, the Kiehl's one doesn't do that either. It's much more of a priming kind of step to give a bit of luminosity to your skin before you apply any makeup or leave your skin as is. And the skin tint does that without the luminosity. It gives this wash of colour on your skin, but it's so, so nondescript that I just don't see the point. It doesn't moisturise the way like a BB cream would or the Hydroluminous foundation does. It doesn't keep my skin feeling like nice and juicy and like okay I've got a little bit of coverage, it looks more evened out. If you had absolutely perfect skin then maybe you would disagree with me. Personally though, £20 for something that doesn't do a heck of a lot. Now you might say well the future Jew does that but I love the fact that it makes me look a little bit more luminous, a little bit more plump, a little bit more just alive. Does that make sense? Whereas the skin tint doesn't do that side of it. It just has this very, very, very sheer wash of colour. So for me, personally, I did not like the skin tint. I didn't hate it. It was fine. But it didn't do anything either. It didn't make me think, I want to rush back and buy that again. Therefore, I will not buy it again and I did not pick it up for this video. Next up, we're going to talk about the stretch concealer. It is around about the £15 mark, I want to say, and they have extended their shade range in the stretch concealer. When I first bought stretch concealer, I want to say they had four or five shades. I think they have closer to 12 now. Maybe the, the skin tint and the stretch concealer will be both have 12 now. Um, I am currently in 
G11. That is the shade that I would wear. Stretch concealer is something I absolutely adore. I adore it and I don't think in the three years that I've been using Glossier I have ever found a dupe for it. I'm going to mention a couple to you that you could possibly say but nothing identical. Nothing identical to this. Therefore this is the third one that I have purchased and completely used up. Uh, you know, what is it, Project Pan? People say they've, they've used the whole thing up. And I will continue to buy it. This is not going to be for everyone, however. If you like a really full coverage concealer, uh, and one of those, uh, let's see, like a, a tart shape tape or um, Revolution, the, the ones that basically were the dupe of that, the e.l.f. ones, all these ones with the big doe foot applicators, the kind of really like full on white under the eye. If you are into that, you're probably not gonna like this. If however, like I've already said, you're one of these people like me who prefers to just look like a slightly better version of their natural self, then I absolutely think this is amazing. I also love it because you can actually see how shiny it is there. It's very emollient, very emollient. And again, people nowadays especially, no disrespect, no shade, no tea, whatever, um, people who are a bit younger, people who are going for that full on almost drag look, don't like concealers that are gonna slip about. They want one that's gonna go on, stay on, not crease, do nothing, not move, bake it, whatever. Personally, that sounds like a nightmare to me because again, these areas for me, these areas here, these areas here, they're, they're all getting a little bit more creased as I get on a bit. And I don't want something that is gonna cake up and be like really heavy and accentuate all these areas for me. So I'm gonna show you what I do with this. Lots of the time, especially if I'm going to work or something, I will not put a foundation on. This is what I would do instead. Let me just zoom you in so you can see a little bit closer. All right, so here I am in all my glory and I'm gonna use my glossy mirror to do this because we're gonna be total cheese balls about this. Basically, I get this on my finger and I am just applying it right under here. Now, it is not heavy coverage. It isn't heavy coverage at all. It is just a sheer coverage. If you have got really, really dark circles under here, then this might not, like, this might be rubbish. You might just be like, this is crap, I don't like it. I will also show you what it looks like on an area like this because obviously that is very different from the under eye. What I would tend to do, you can see I've put it on here. I will hit it down here as well because the cat scratched me, little bastard. <laughs> Same as the other side. And I do have a little bit more of like a darker area here, like a little bit more of a bag at that side than I do at that side. So sometimes I need a little bit extra on that side. <laughs> And on these little areas of discoloration, I'll just pop it over here. Now, I've not put a heck of a lot on there, but the change is dramatic in the sense of the areas that I was worried about, I'm now happy with. I, I, that doesn't, I'm like, that's enough for me. I don't need any more. If I was doing a bit more and I wasn't putting a foundation on and I thought it needs to be a little bit more coverage, then I may tend to put it under here too just round about here, but be aware, because this is so emollient, this might then have a tendency to make you look greasy in these areas if you're already kind of a greasy person. It's up to you completely, but personally, I adore this product. I will continue to buy it. I would highly recommend it to anybody, and I hope to God it doesn't go like discontinued or anything, because I do not know what I will purchase that this will be the same. If anybody uses anything that they think is similar, please let me know. I do then use a little beauty sponge and just kind of even everything out because, and you'll see, it, it might lift some off, it might make it shine through a little bit, but that doesn't bother me because I'm kind of like, skin is skin, I'm happy for it to shine through a little bit. If you wanted to use a heavier concealer there just to take away you know, a blemish mark or something, then fine. That's perfectly acceptable if that's what you wanna do. Personally, I don't really care. I'm kinda like, obviously I don't want a big striking red spot on my face, but I'm not gonna kid on like I don't have them. And that's not me being preachy or like, oh, like, you know, real skin. and Like, I know people want sometimes that perfect look. They want that airbrushed look. I personally just don't have the time to be bothered. If I was going to work in the morning, 
that would this would be me like that would be what I do but blush etc so that's me now I'm gonna come in nice and close so you can see under the eyes and that's it under the eyes there now here where I've got creases and stuff this will crease slightly but the amazing thing about stretch concealer is I will just kind of go like that throughout the day um, and, and it will just blend nicely it doesn't cake up I don't feel like I'm getting like a build up anywhere it is very easily rectified throughout the day as I said I would kind of throw in dupes if I could give you them so this is the next dark circle collect concealer corrector concealer dark circle concealer and um, this is one I picked up because it's in a little pot and I thought, oh, will that be similar? There are other ones that I've picked up in little pots that just haven't been anything like the stretch concealer. But if you're looking for a dupe and you think, oh, well, I, I wouldn't even, I can't remember what price this was. The, the price difference isn't massive. It's not like the stretch concealer is 40 quid and this is 10. The, the, you know, the stretch concealer is 15 pounds or something like that. So it's not a massive saving. But if you're in Boots and Superdrug, wherever, and it's easier to pick this up, then this is a good kind of interim, and that's how I ended up with it. So it's a good dupe, but it's not exact. We're now going to move on to blush. Now, anybody who watches me will know that I have done a massive cream blush glossy dupe type video recently. I will put it up here. So I'm not going to go into like too much detail about what would be good dupes for the cloud paint. I really like the cloud paints. I think they're phenomenal and um, I currently have haze and storm I did have dusk in a full size as well but that one I, it says you can only use these for do, 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 where's the little thing six months Um, I would dispute that because I have definitely had storm for about a year now and I continue to use it and it's fine but dusk did go a little bit funny and it maybe was over a year old it was maybe closer to two years old and it did go a little bit funny and smell a little bit funny, so I stopped using it. Personally, that is up to you. Um, I'm kind of one of these people, I'm a bit more stringent with skincare with regards to the, the use-by date on things. If it's cosmetics, I'm kind of like, if it smells okay, if the texture's okay, I'll put it on my skin. You know, it says six months on these, but I think you do get much longer. Now, these are £15 a pop, but you get so much use out of them. And saying that, that means that's why I have never managed to get through one because it's a little bit like a lipstick. How often, unless you're using the same blush every single day, are you going to get through a full product? Uh, I also mentioned in my last video about how Glossy give you little samples of things. So I now have, as well as Storm and Haze, um, Puff and Dawn as well. These two I have not tried before. Um, so they'll be quite interesting to have a little look at. Today I am going to put on Storm though. Haze is more like a berry colour. I really like this one in the winter to give you that flush of you just came in from the cold type of colour, especially on Sunday with my skin tone. This one is a little bit more like a ruddy red, like a, like a little bit like terracotta, that's the way I would say it is on my skin tone. I feel like this gives me that kind of look of I've just been in the sun a little bit, but it's not brown, it's not a bronzer shade whatsoever. So I'm just going to open this here and show you. You, This is the only thing, I suppose the packaging on this is a little bit of a pain in the tits, but so I've just squeezed out the tiniest bit there and even that would be quite alarming, quite a lot of product. Now a lot of people do not like cream blush because they feel it doesn't blend, they feel like it goes patchy, they get a little bit worried about it because they're like, oh, I look like a clown now. Personally, I'm kind of like, I don't care if I look like a clown. And I really, really enjoy how these blend and I really enjoy the colour that it brings to my cheeks. I think it's lovely. These, I would say, are much more of a stain. Um, again, you will get much more explanation in that blush video that I spoke about. But these are like a stain the way Benetton used to be, rather than a like powder, they're not a cream to powder thing, they're not a gel, they're much more like a stain. I think that's the best way for me to try and explain it. Now, you're probably looking at me thinking, Jesus, you look like you've got sunburn now. But that's okay, and, and I still, I didn't use all the product that was on the top there. If I feel I've went a bit too wild with that, then I just take the same kind of blender that I used and give a little bit of blending round about the edges and stuff. Just take it over the top, make it a little less frightful. I love the way it almost gives your skin a little gleam. 
it stays all day. I cannot say a single bad word about these blushes. They are £15. Two blushes, £30, or you can get them like in a pack of two for 25 It's a lot of money when you think you could pick up a drugstore blusher for a fiver. But they are very, very, very nice. At the time when they came out, they were very much the only thing like it. Now people are duping them left, right and centre. Go and check out that other video because there's much more explanation on that. Now as I said, this for me, stick a bit of um, mascara on. That would be me. I would go to my work like this. I would be happy. Uh, if I wanted to take it a bit further, I could put on like a little dewy highlight here. We will get into that. But I'm going to move on to eye products with regards to Glossier now because I'm going to use one to show you what I think of them. Again, if you do follow me over on Instagram, I've done a very quick video of kind of first impressions of a couple of the eye products. So go over there and check it out. Uh, today I will be using one and actually initially when I picked these up, I thought, oh god, like actually one's really good and one's really crap. But I'm going to use the one that I thought was crap today because actually I've learned how to use it and actually I quite like it with the kind of look that I'm going to go for today. Alright, so these are the Glossy Sky Washes. I originally got, do, 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 where's the colours? Pam, that's this one here, and Terra. Terra is beautiful. As I say, if you go and check out that little IGTV, you can see me using it for the first time just being like, this is fucking amazing. But unfortunately for you, it's not what I'm going to put on my eyes today. I also picked up in my most recent order, Lawn, which is like fucking unbelievable. I am going to swatch them on the back of my hand. They are very, very strange. And again, I completely understand. Um, one of my, I was gonna say friends, but I always feel it's a little bit weird when you say friends, when it's somebody you know via Instagram or the internet. But a lovely lady that watches some of my videos, and that is Nicole over at My Glasgow Times. I will put a link down below for her. Um, she had kind of said like, she really enjoys a really kind of more full face of makeup. So she's never really quite got Glossier. She never really understood why people are into it because this kind of sheer wash of color, she's just not into it. And I think that's fine. Like it's absolutely what you like. If that's not for you, if you just don't see the point in it, then fucking, I totally get that. Why would you pay money for something if you think that's just not me? I still like color, but I feel I have to use it in a different way now. All right, so there they are swatched on the back of my hand. Now, they don't look much on the back of my hand, but they are very, very strange consistencies. And actually, I think Terra, the one in the middle, looks kind of patchy on my hand, which actually on the eye, it does not at all. This up here, Lawn, is so interesting. I've not used this on my eyes yet. I'm so excited to try it. I'm not putting it on today, sorry, to this point. But I think that looks so interesting. And this one here, Pam, was the one that in my video I was like, this is shit, I don't like it. But actually, it's nice to look like I've not really got anything on my eye when I do. Bit strange of a thing to say, but I'm just being honest with you. It's probably the thing, if I think I just want a winged liner, then, this is what I would put on because it's kind of nothing even though it, it just gives a bit more dimension to my eye. This is too much alongside like a winged liner and obviously this is about colour. So we're going to use Pam and I will show you how I apply these. These are so interesting. They dry down, they become matte, they don't go shiny. They are such an interesting texture of something that I've never ever experienced before and I just really really like them. In saying that, I probably wouldn't pick up pool like the blue one, um, because the lighter colours just do not have as interesting an effect as the darker ones. This one is second to none, top, brilliant, I would tell you to buy it in a heartbeat. This one I would say I wouldn't rush to purchase again, even though I've found a way to use it. Alright, so they are like a doe foot applicator, you will see here and you just kind of swipe them on. Now this is supposed to be a kind of, I don't know, it's like a golden colour it says. I would say it's more of a kind of peachy yellow to be honest with you. Um, it's odd, it's a bit strange. I think on my skin tone it is not the most flattering colour. So what I do is I let that dry a little bit because you can see it's kind of shiny when you first put it on. I take a brush, this is the one I've been using with it so it looks dirty but it is this product I've been using with it anyway. I then kind of stamp at it and then just slowly blend, blend, blend the edges 
like that. And I'm telling you, when you do this with terra, that really like deep orangey burnt colour, the effect is phenomenal. This one doesn't do it justice and I know you're probably sitting thinking, well, why didn't you show us Terra? But I'm not going for that look today. There, so that's kind of what I would do just to have a little bit of something in my eye, but it's not, you know, you can see the difference, but it's not anything groundbreaking. It's not anything like, wow, you've got loads of color in your eye. It's just a nice wash of color for a bit of base. Um, and sometimes that's all I want. I don't want anything else on my eye. All right, so you can see the kind of just wash of color in my eye. Again, I completely understand if people are like, what is the point in that? I don't get it. But personally, I would be like, I'd, again, stick a bit of mascara on, a little bit of lippy, maybe even just a lip balm, and I would feel a little bit like I'm a little bit more done up than I would normally be. That terra colour, or even just over my Instagram, you will see me wearing terra, and the impact of that is unbelievable in comparison to this one. So I think the dark shades and the light shades are very, very different, and I think you need to really remember that. I feel a bit like this, even if I had really, really dark skin, if I had really ebony black skin, I would wonder how this would show up. But sometimes I look at the Glossier website and it's someone with this beautiful dark skin wearing the lighter color and it looks really effective. And I wonder, is that because they layer lots of it on? So I think it's just a bit hit and miss with the color with these. And as I say, if they were all like Terra, I'd be like, buy the whole set but they're not. So do you spend your money on it? Again, it's just totally, and I will use this. I will continue to use it in this manner. I like it and I've found a way to get it to work for me, but is it worth spending money on the lighter ones? I'm probably gonna say no. Uh, I could have done without this in my life, but I have it now and I will use it. Okay, for my next item, it is the Pro Tip. This is gonna be another bit of a first impressions for you because I have tried this on the back of my hand, but I've yet to try it on my eye. This is 15 pounds and it is one of these brush tips. It's like uh, the Kat Von D one, the one that's really famous, you know. Um, I think the NYX Epic Ink Liner as well, I've maybe mentioned that in my monthly roundup before. It's one of those brush ones. It's not a felt tip one, it's a brush one. Again, the packaging is adorable. It's pink, you know, it's got like a little tiny G on the top of the lid. It's just, everything about it is very, very cutesy. It's very glossy, it's very, very nice. But we'll see how this goes because I'm a little bit dubious as to whether I'm gonna like this one or not. <sighs> All right, so first impressions. Um, first of all, I know they're cousins and not twin sisters. Uh, <laughs> uh, see, when you've not done that for a while, and then you're a bit like, oh, blugger, what does that look like? Um, okay, so first impressions. I think for £15, this is a little bit overrated. Uh, I'm not saying hundreds of people have raved about it. What I'm saying is, what is this doing that one out of five or isn't, I suppose? Um... It is not the blackest black. It took a few goes of going over a couple times to get it nice and black like that. The brush is lovely. Personally though, will I buy this again? I, I will have to see how it wears throughout the rest of the day, that kind of stuff. And again, I will report to you in my kind of monthly roundup what I think of it, but on first impressions, I'm a bit like, meh, is this worth 15 pounds? Probably not. You could probably get something cheaper that does the same thing. But as I've said in my last video, if you're one of those people who's like, I want everything to be glossy, then, you know, pick it up if you want. But you could probably get something similar at the drugstore that does the exact same thing, if not a little bit better. From there, we are going on to Lash Slick. I've never tried this either. This is another new one for me, but as I said, we were doing a full face of Glossier. Lash Lick is around about the 15 pound mark as well, I wanna say, which that to me, it's, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I feel like the liner and the mascara, like for the liner to be a similar price to the mascara, is that just me? I feel like usually you would think the mascara would be more expensive. I don't know. Again, very cute, very pink, very nice. Um, let me have a look at the brush. 
The brush is one of these rubber ones. I'm hoping you can see that there. So it's one of these like rubbery ones. It's got no curve to it at all. Personally, I think the brush is quite small. I would usually like like a bit bushier, wider brush. But if I have two that I like with rubber ones, it would probably be Benefit Roller Lash and the NYX on the rise. This actually looks quite similar to the NYX on the rise. So we'll see how this goes. I am gonna curl my lashes, but that's because that's something I would always do. Um, so in case anybody's like, oh, you're cheating, like you can't see how it curls your lashes or whatever, but I would always curl my lashes. So I'm just being honest with you. Okay, so I've zoomed in. You can see this is my lashes before, pre-mascara. Um, as you can see there, there is a little crease in, but not much. And it, it's nothing to me. It does what I need it to do. Um, also, please ignore the eyebrows because I've not done them for a while and I really couldn't be arsed when in lockdown. Um, but I will show you me applying this. I have curled them, as I said already, because I always would. I'm aware that I've put on a black liquid liner, which doesn't really help you see my bloody eyelashes, but we're working around it. All right, so here are my lashes after. I actually quite like this. Um, again, it will depend on the kind of makeup you like. I prefer to look like I've got really soft, fluttery, long lashes. I don't like clumpy mascaras for people who like that really like thick. Um, bad girl bang and me did not get on. Um, you know, like clumpy mascaras is not my thing. This, however, is really pretty. It's very fine, it's very fluttery. It's gave me a lot of length. It's not the most volumizing, but again, that to me isn't always like my top priority because I find those mascaras can look really clumpy. I don't know what it'll be like for Fallout. Uh, I would have to report back to you again in my kind of monthly roundup to let you know what I think. But so far, I think they look quite good. I quite like that. I think it's pretty. I think that's quite nice. Um, I would wear that mascara. I think that's really good. And depending on the longevity of it, like how long it lasts throughout the day, it would certainly be one that I would put in to go to work. Because it's just nice and like fluttery and natural as opposed to something really dramatic and volumizing. I really like that. I think that's really nice. Um, as I said, the brush certainly looked like the NYX on the Rise Mascara and I would say actually the effect is very, very similar to that as well. So possibly that could be a dupe for that. But I think the On, on the Rise is a tenner and this is around about £15 mark. So there's a little bit of like, you know, It'll depend. It'll depend on what the fall down is on this and etc. Because I really like the Honor Eyes mascara. Now while I've still got you relatively zoomed in, I'm going to talk about Boy Brow. One of the best selling products on Glossier website. Um, it is obviously a brow gel. I wear brown. It is kind of fucking phenomenal, annoyingly. It's one of those ones that if you're going to pick up anything, I would say pick that up. If you, if you like doing your brows, if you're into brow stuff, that one is wonderful. Uh, so I'm gonna put a little bit of this through. They do do a brow flick pen now as well, which is like, you can draw on hairs. Personally, I do not require that because as you can see, I have got the bushiest brows known to mankind. Okay, maybe not the bushiest, but they're very black and they're very dark. And I wish the hair on my head was as thick as the hair on my brows and my legs, quite frankly, and other areas. Have you ever heard anybody saying like your eyebrows and your pubes are basically the same thing? This is what I've got to contend with in other areas. It's thick, it's annoying, it's not good in the summertime if you're going for the bikini look, you know? But excuse me while I do my other eyebrow. Um, I do think this is phenomenal stuff. I do really like it. I have probably bought this three times now and I would absolutely purchase it again. Again, it's one of these ones that's like, if I'm ordering from Glossy, I will pick this up because it is very, very nice. Uh, I know now that um, laminated brow is all the rage. It's something people are really into. It can kind of give you that look if that's what you want. 
as I've said, I have very, very bushy big black brows and it just tames them. And I find that boy brow give me a little bit more of that uniformity that I'm looking for without having to worry about plucking them so often. Yes, I do get hairs under here. When I zoomed in, you've probably seen them. Doesn't really bother me that much. Uh, every now and again, I will do a little bit in here, maybe a little bit here, but that is it. Otherwise, I just let them do what they want. I'm lucky at the moment that it's relatively fashionable to have big brows. Uh, when we go back round again to the 80s and the 90s and you've all got skinny brows, I'll be up shit's creek. With regards to a dupe for boy brow, the number one that I'm going to tell you about, I even think it was in my 2019 favourites, is Elf Swow Brow. It is so similar and for that reason I'd be like, well why do you buy boy brow? The only thing I would say about this, the brush, um, the applicator on the Elf is a little bit bigger than boy brow and it also has, this has like those fibres, the little fibres. Uh, you know you used to get mascara with lash fibres in it? This has fibres in it, but this is a very, very close dupe. I will continue to buy Boy Brow, absolutely, as I say, if I'm making an order, then I'll throw one of them in the bag, because I really, really like it. But, if you just don't want to know about that, but you've heard everybody rave about it, and you think, I'm never going to order from Glossy again, but I quite like that Boy Brow, this is a very, very close dupe. Alright, so we're moving back on to the face again. Um, this would probably be a step, like I'm doing my blush and my, my highlight at the same time. This is Haloscope. Um, I have it in quartz. I have purchased this. This will be the third one. Um, and this is their cream highlight stick. Can I get it open? Yes. There we go. Can you see that? Is that okay? Uh, it has colour on the outside and like a bam, like pretty much just an oil stick in the middle. You can see me doing that there. When I first bought it, I thought this is the bee's knees. This is exactly what I want. A cream highlight. It's not too shimmery. It looks like the sweaty glow rather than Tin Man effect. I don't like it. I don't like lots of shimmery highlighters. I don't like blinding highlights when they look like, you know, I like the, the kind of the, the drama of it all when I watch YouTubers and things and they'll be like, BAM! Look at that! And they'll be like, look at that! It's blending you from the sky. And like, I, I like that. It's good fun to watch. I don't want it in my day to day life though. It's not the way I want to look. And I don't want to look frosty. That's it. This does not do that. They do it in three colours. They do it in like a really bronzy colour. I can't remember the name of that. And they do it in opal, I want to say. Is it opal? Is that Becca? What am I thinking of? I want to say it's opal, but it's basically like a pearlescent blue colour. Not for me. So quartz is the one I would usually go for. Now, I would do this straight on my face, but I think these are a little bit stiffer when you first get them, if I remember rightly. So what I'm going to do is like rub the top of it onto my fingers because it takes a little bit of heating up. Initially, once you've actually got it going, once you're maybe like a week into using it, you could probably just put it straight on your face and it would be fine. But initially, just that top kind of layer needs a little bit of heating up. So you could just rub it on your two, kind of your ring finger and your middle finger here and just press it onto the cheekbones. And I would t put it right on the tops of my cheekbones just to give me that really like dewy look. I would tend to put it down my snozz a wee bit as well. And people would probably be screaming at me right now being like, you're gonna look greasy. I don't give a fuck, that's kind of what I like to go for. I put it on the top of my cupid's bow as well, just to help me because my top lip is much thinner than my bottom lip. You could take it up onto the brow bone as well, if you liked. But that's kind of the areas I would put it. I think you can tell there's a bit more gleam there than there was initially with the future dew. Now the reason why this is the only third time that I've purchased this, A is because it lasts you a very long time. B, because I wanted to look, as I said, for kind of dupes of budget ranges of glossy. This is £18, I want to say, and I kind of wanted to see, as time went on, like I say, now there are loads of dupes for cloud paints, and I wanted to see what the drugstore would start bringing out to dupe this. And I would say that I found something better, and that is why I have not been back and repurchased it. Now, I do really like this, and I'm glad that I've picked it up again. I will absolutely use it, but the Burt's Bees All A Glow Stick is exactly the same. I want to say the colour is a little warmer 
Now I've like that's me. I've nearly used it all up. And again, it has one of these like sticks in the middle. It's almost exactly the same. And I find this is much creamier. It's much more like when you're you don't have to warm it up to use it. It's much more emollient. It's softer. And it gives you that more dewy, shiny look, which I prefer. So personally, I if I was told, like, you know, you can only pick one or the other for the rest of your days, I would pick this one. This, I'm afraid to say, is better. I, I, I have to be honest with you. So I will absolutely use this. I'm glad I've picked it up again. As I said at the start of this video, I wasn't going to pick anything up that I wouldn't use. I wasn't going to repurchase something if I thought it was a lot of shit. So I will absolutely use it. But once that one's finished with... I will repurchase this. And finally, to finish off this look, I know it's been a really long video, I'm sorry. To finish off this look, we're gonna talk about the Generation G lipsticks. Now, when they initially came out, I had to look in my kind of archives to pull these out. They were in these kind of containers. Um, that's it there. Very skinny, I'm almost like a little cigarette or something. And you can see my zip is done, but this one here still probably has something in it. There, that's jam. So this is like a really deep berry colour. That's it there. It's like a really deep pink colour. Um, and these ones, basically, that I don't know whether it was the packaging, people were complaining about it, or they just thought we'll reformulate it. So they brought it out in new packaging. And when I picked up the new ones, I picked up Cake, which I've been raving about now for a little while. And this is their like nude colour. It's like a brown nude. It looks dark there, but actually it's not that dark at all. It's like, they're very sheer, as you can see on my hand. I think that's a very bright colour, but they're like a sheer wash of colour. So that is Cake above Jam. The new packaging is much, much nicer. It's a much more classic lipstick shape. It's just nicer to work with. The other ones are very skinny on your lips and I felt they kind of were just a little bit flimsy for what they were. This is much, much nicer. I don't know if they actually reformulated the product, but certainly I feel they feel a little bit smoother too. Now the Generation G lipsticks are probably ones that you've heard loads about as well, and you've probably thought, I'm sick of hearing about them. Like, what's the hype? I don't understand. Like, they're just a wash of color. Like, no, I want to see something on my lips. Personally though, I really like that kind of almost like fuzzed out edge. Again, it's kind of like a, a, a trend thing that's going on the now but i really like that and i picked up with that delivery a new zip and i thought that's what i'm gonna fucking put on today it's a beautiful bright red color it is more on the orangey side of red rather than the blue but it's so nice because it's sheer and it's not like really really heavy that looks bright but it won't look like this on my lips when i put it on you will see a lot of people have complained about that and a lot of people obviously bought these thinking they were going to be something else because on the website i've seen lots of people being like oh like it's barely there like i don't like it but the people who get this kind of look love it so that's two two coats there and you can definitely see it's on my lips like it's not totally and utterly sheer but you can build it up to be like this and actually have like a nice poppy color or you can just do that initial wash and have a very slight stain um i would say that i don't mind like kind of just fuzzing a little bit around the edges here and having it looking a little bit like you've just ate a bowl of tomato soup i quite like that but that's because that's what I'm into. I completely understand why people would think like, what are you on about? It's just like a coloured lip balm, like I'm not gonna bother. But the other thing about these is that they are matte, which I love because everything that has a sheer wash of colour in it is always like a gloss or a balm or a stain or something. Like it's never ever a matte product. And that's why I really, really like these. And I just think this is glorious. Uh, briefly, I'm just going to talk about one more product that I've tried and that is the Lid Stars. These came out, oh god, maybe like a year into them coming to the UK. Um, they came out, like let's say they came out with four colours, they then extended it to six colours, seven colours, whatever it is. 
a lot of people are like, oh, I can't wait for these like glossy or doing eyeshadows now. These obviously only came out quite recently, the, the sky wash ones. Um, but people were going crazy for these. And then a lot of the reviews were that they were absolute mud. They were shit, like they didn't think they were any good. Um, I have Cub, which is this like rose gold one. I'll just swatch that on the back of my hand for you. So that is Cub. For the price of it, is it worth it? Um, probably not. You can probably get cheaper in the drugstore versions of this and one of which I will tell you about in a moment. And I also picked up, once they released new colours, Herb, which is like this beautiful green gold colour and it's probably more dark. So that is Herb and you can see on it that it is much more patchy than the one above it, but I think that's because of the darkness of it. So, with regards to the lid stars, I would say the opposite from the sky washes. I think the sky washes in the darker colours are better, and I think the lid stars in the lighter colours are better. Uh, I'm just kind of smooshing this out on the back of my hand to show you. So that is Herb. Now again, I do like it, but what I find is that when I use Herb, I would use it as a bit more of a base and then I would go over the top of it with a kind of khaki or a golden shadow just to amp it up a wee bit because on its own it is a little patchy, I have to be honest. If however you think, no, I really want to try something like that, I love a cream eyeshadow, then Lottie London, I hope they still make these, if they do I will put them down below, these are the eye foils from Lottie London and these are cheaper, much more effective these are extreme almost. So it's like a pink but it also goes this kind of golden colour there, hoping you can see that. But these are much better, they've got those little doe foot applicators just like the lid stars, they're much much cheaper and I would say go and spend your money on one of these instead of these that go a little bit patchy and a bit strange. As I said this was going to be another long video, my tea is absolutely cold, frozen cold. Um, but I hope this was useful, I hope that you get something out of it. If you think, actually, do you know what, the look you've got on today, I'm kind of into that, maybe you'll think about going and purchasing from Glossy, or maybe when you're thinking, oh, I'm going to get a couple of skin bits, you'll then go in and think, well, what could I add into my bag? If I was going to say off the top of my head the things that you really must try from the makeup side of things, it would easily be my top three, the stretch concealer, the boy brow, and the Generation G lipsticks. Now people would maybe think I was going to say the Halo Scope there, but because I know I can get other things like that now, oh and the cloud paints. So, no, I tell you what, boy brow, stretch concealer and the cloud paints. I think the cloud paints are something that anybody, regardless of your style of makeup, would enjoy. I think the boy brow again is something that anybody the stretch concealer and the Generation G, it's dependent on what style of makeup you like. But those would be my picks, those would be my top four picks of things I would say you should go and try them. This mascara is really nice actually and kind of look in the viewfinder here, I'm like yeah I'm happy with that, happy with the liner. But I will keep you informed about how I feel about that, I'll maybe start wearing it to my work over the next week and keep you updated towards my monthly roundup at the end of the month. Otherwise. Hope this was useful, I have left a link down below for 10% off if you are a first time glossy orderer, please use the code below, as I said I am not affiliated with them in any way, shape or form, I am not sponsored by them, it just means it's one of those codes where if you buy something you get 10% off then I get money back on an order of my next order and you can pass your own code on to whomever you like. If you like somebody better than me and you want to use their code, then please do that too. You don't have to use my code, but it is down below if you fancy 10% off. So with all that being said, we've got to the end of it. I hope these two videos were useful. I hope that you gained some knowledge um, and kind of think, well, I know where I'm going to spend my money on Glossier now uh, and what I'm not going to bother with. Um, and I hope to see you all again soon. Bye.